Assalamu alaikum. <clears throat> uh, today we will continue uh, the discussion again uh, came from the Klam cosmological argument. Alex Connor is a cosmic skeptic and is a very popular figure on YouTube media. He has debated with a lot of uh, big scholars, philosophers. He himself is a very young philosopher and a scholar. And um, recently he debated uh, with William Lane Craig uh, on Klam cosmological argument. Previously he had a different position. Now recently he changed his position on this argument and he is inclining towards this understanding there must be a cause, uh, nature of this cause can further understand, we can further understand the nature of this cause. So he has some properties in his mind. If the cause, if the Klam cosmological argument is true, then there must be, if, if the cause is there, the cause must be in something which he explains in his um, um, finding. So let's see what he um, um, address those issues. The claim that my video isn't true. There actually are things that we can at least arguably know about the nature of the cause and properties that we can assign to it. For example, if by definition anything that materially exists is part of the universe, then whatever caused the universe must be immaterial since if it was material, it would just be part of the universe, not its cause. So immediately we can say that the cause must be immaterial. Right? If time is a property of the universe, then whatever caused it must exist outside of time or timelessly. We can make arguments like these to say that if the universe did have a cause, we actually can argue more than just, as I originally said, that it's some kind of arbitrary first mover. That is to say, there actually are at least some properties of this cause that we can at least arguably assigned to it if it does exist. It still doesn't get us to the Christian God, of course, but it does get us to something that looks a lot more like some form of God than just some random nondescript object. We might also say something like, for instance, if the universe has a cause, that cause must at least have some form of creative power too, since if something caused the universe, it must have the power and the creative capacity to do so. Now, don't misunderstand me. You can, of course, argue against all of these points I'm raising. So you just uh, heard his uh, presentation. What he came up with some attributes and uh, some properties of that cause, which uh, we can offer him what the Muslim understand about this creator. And um, let me uh, give a little introduction. The Muslim <coughs> believe that the Allah the, is the only true God. Allah is the name of God in Arabic. And, uh, and the people who worship other than Allah are called Ilah. So there are two categories now. People who worship other than Allah or people who worship Allah must have the same attributes which Allah has. That means is the only one God. If I say I believe in the creator of heaven and earth who created all mankind, who created everyone, and he is the one true God, he himself is eternal and uncreated. And other person believe the same thing so that we are agree that there is only one God. Now, usually people uh, found, you found people worshiping objects in the creation, objects of creation like stars, sun, moon, and um, even human being and uh, in cosmos you get this uh, any objects in the cosmos you know so the and sometimes the human being uh, their own thoughts their own they call themselves a, as a god also because they think they are smart and they are god also so there's a lot of ideas you will find when people talk about god so when in islamic terminology allah is the only true god he is uncreated uncaused cause, he's the first cause, and everything else beside Allah is the creation. And in this creation, if people create 
uh, any gods, they will be creating those gods by themselves because they have no awareness about Allah, number one, or they are superstitious, they are finding something, uh, answer which they can uh, find themselves. So they attribute those uh, um, powers or something to those uh, smaller, those objects, and they turn those objects into God. So that's therefore, uh, in Arabic, we call them ilah. Ilah means God and goddess. Could be male, female, anything else, you know, but these are all objects in the creations. Now, if you analyze the word Allah, if you look in this, Allah, if you break this word into two, two part, A-L plus Ilah. Now, A-L is the is a definite article called D. In, in English, we say T-H-E-D is a definite article. And Ilah is the gods and goddess. But when you join together, it becomes the word Allah in Arabic. That means Allah is the only creator. And everything Allah created, the objects are Ilah, but Allah did not call them Ilah. The people turned. Allah did not make them Ilah for them. People make themselves. People supposed to know Allah and they should be avoiding the worshipping Ilah. So Allah is the only one to be worshipped. So all Ilah are the objects of creation. The same word also uh, used in Aramaic called Allah. This word of the creator is exactly the same way the Allah in Arabic and Aramaic. They are sister language. And Jesus, it was spoken by Jesus in, in Palestine. And this is the same, God has the same attributes. There are many verses in the Bible direct that. This is Allah is the one true God to be worshipped. <clears throat> and Hebrew words sometimes have a different uh, meaning in those. Elo, Elohi, Eloha, Elohim. These are all referred to the related to God, the creator of all. And the, in, in Hebrew, we use E-L, and while in Arabic, we use A-L. That's the only difference here. Is it? So if you look at the D, the definite article is E-L here, and an Arabic definite article is A-L. So like uh, now some of those attributes which the Alex uh, uh, thought about in his presentation. So if you look into the top slide, uh, and we say al khalik it means the creator. <clears throat> and al alim the knower of seen and unseen. Al-Hakim, the all-wise. Al-Bari, the originator and the inventor. Al-Samad, the self-sufficient, has a more meaning is eternal, even the timeless also falls into that meaning. Al-Qadir, the fully able, one. He's the all-powerful or fully able, able one. This is the one. Yeah. Uh, other attributes. Al-Qayyum. That means the self subsisting. A self subsisting one the, upon whom everything depends. Al-Haq. This is the ultimate truth. Al-Aziz. The mighty. And Al-Sabur. This is a timeless reality when we say timeless that Allah is uh, is a timeless reality and uh, he's the first cause uncaused cause and he's the eternal being in this way we will understand uh, the true nature of Allah through these attributes but Allah has uncountable attributes which the human being uh, cannot comprehend and the Quran and the tradition of the Prophet, <clears throat> some of the book called Hadith, mention those, uh, some of those names also. And, uh, and there is a narration from Prophet that a person should reflect on these names actually. And he, there are 99 virtuous names and a person will reflect on that. They will definitely gain uh, more knowledge and wisdom and definitely will benefit in this world and also it will benefit to him in the next life. So this is very important uh, <clears throat> to know because the creator of heaven and earth, he created all mankind 
everything we see in this universe is created by Allah and he is the true God. And then when Muslims talk about Allah, they always correlate this creator is for all mankind. So everybody, uh, there is no, you, you can't monopolize God and demonize other. So there is only one God and everything is creation of God. So all mankind from Adam and Eve and every, that's why one of the chapter in the Quran, it says, Kul a'uzu bi rabbin nas, bismillah rabbin nas, kul a'uzu bi rabbin nas, say, he say, Lord or God of all, Lord of all mankind. He's the Rabb, he's the provider, sustainer for all mankind. Malikinna, he's the king of all mankind. He's the authority, the final authority, the power in the universe is the uh, uh, Malikin Nas. And he's the Malikin Nas for all mankind. And Ilahin Nas, and he's the God of all mankind. So only Allah deserves to be worshipped. Allah deserves to be praised. Allah deserves to be obeyed. Allah deserves to be submit, submitted. And this is called the understanding that whoever submit his will to Allah is a submitter. And the person is called Muslim. And the religion becomes submission to God, means Islam. And, and <clears throat> this is how uh, Muslim understand uh, the uh, position as a human being. So uh, I, I'd like to um, uh, go through uh, the next, uh, um, uh, I would like to present the Surah Akhlas, which is a 112th chapter of the Quran. And we'll go through the meaning. That four uh, verses of the Surah Akhlas gives the full idea about the nature of Allah, the nature of God. And uh, any scientist, any philosopher, Anyone who will make research, they will come to this conclusion that if there is a cause of this universe, then they will reflect on these four verses, they will find their answer. Because the way Allah presents these four verses in such a way that everybody can understand, a common person can understand, and an educated person understand, and the philosopher, the scientist, the scholars, they can also understand. So it's very, very uh, a small uh, chapter in the Quran. And it was uh, happened in the a group of people came to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And they asked him, O oh, Prophet, tell us the nature of your God. Then the angel Gabriel came and then he recited this to Prophet Muhammad and asked Prophet Muhammad to tell these people about the nature of God. Angel Gabriel, by the way, is the same Angel Gabriel mentioned in the previous scripture, especially if you look into the Bible. And uh, there's a story of the Mary that the Angel Gabriel came and gave the good news of birth of Jesus. The same Angel Gabriel comes to the Prophet Muhammad. He came to him and then delivered the message, the entire Quran, word for word. He uh, and from uh, over the period of 23 years. Prophet Muhammad memorized the entire Quran word for word and his companion memorized it. Then the generation after that, they followed him, they memorized it. Today, over 10 million Muslim has memorized the entire Quran. So today, uh, we'll reflect on the verse uh, 112. The title of this surah is Sincerity. In Arabic, is Al-Ikhlas. And let's begin. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. قل هو الله أحد. Say, He is Allah, who is one. الله الصمد. Allah, the eternal refuge. لم يلد ولم يولد. He neither begets nor is born. Nor is there to him any equivalent. So, uh, we just heard this surah, so beautiful. And uh, now we will go to each of the uh, ayah. And then we'll uh, get some um, further more uh, uh, under, try to understand in depth. Uh, 
Say, He is Allah. So say, He is Allah who is one. So, Qul Hu Wallahu Ahad. Now, the Prophet was telling the people, He is Allah. Now, the word He here is, uh, uh, it's not Allah is a male or a female. Allah is, is the creator, is the reality. But there is no equivalent from Arabic to English. So, this represent as a reference. Uh, and the Arabic word is Qul Hu Wallahu so now he is here is used to refer to the creator and uh, one kulhuwallahu ahad ahad is the one which is absolute one this ahad meaning means it this cannot be divided into any further parts for example one over one over two or one over third one over six no it cannot be in, this is indivisible one it's an absolute one the similar word is also used in hebrew which is called ahad it's the same meaning actually allah is ahad or ahad let's see the next verse now allah samad allah the eternal refuge now samad has more many meanings in in this the whole uh, attributes or this property that Allah is eternal refuge Allah is the create Allah is uncreated being and Allah is the uncaused cause he's the first cause everything depends on a samad everything depends on Allah and Allah does not depend on no one because Allah is the uncreated being and everything is created being everything we the when human being by mistake worship those created thing they make them their illa they were supposed to worship allah because allah is the one who created everything let's see the third one he neither begets nor is born now this is very important and in many times uh, you will see especially uh, if you look at the Judaism they are pretty much clean with this idea that God has any offspring or any lineage or any sons or daughter this concept is uh, the people who makes the Ilah they turn God into the Ilah of objects of creations and then they turn them into their gods so that's where the Allah is telling here that Allah neither begets nor is born. And why this argument is important? Because if you look at the previous two verses, that means Allah is eternal refuge. In order to support that eternal, Allah will introduce this. He neither begets nor is born. That means Allah is always there. He's eternal. Nobody gave birth to God, and God does not give birth to no one. Otherwise, again, who created this God? Who created that infinite regression again? So this is exactly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining to us that he neither begets nor is born. Now, this is the last one, which is final conclusion so that means nor is there to him any equivalent that means there is none like unto him he's unique every single thing in the creation cannot be compared to allah star sun moon human being and nothing can be called allah only allah himself is allah everything is the creation of allah and people who worship these objects, they are Ilah, not Allah. So sometime, you might have heard some atheists will say, uh, I just, you reject 2,099 gods and uh, 2,999 gods, some, some, uh, and we reject only uh, one more on top of that. So, so the thing is this, you don't reject one more. You reject all those gods, Ilah. Those ilah has to be rejected. This is the command from Allah. If a person accept Islam, he has to make this confirmation. This la ilaha, 
illa Allah. La ilah, there is no God, there is no ilah. So whether it's the 2099 or, or 3000 or 3 million, 3 trillion, 3 zillion, any numbers of creations or any number of objects, every single ilah has to be rejected. And ex except the one who is Allah, which is uncreated, uncaused God. He's the creator of all mankind. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's the God of all mankind. All the prophets and messengers from the lineage of uh, Adam, then all the way to Noah, from Noah to all the way to the prophet Abraham. And prophet Abraham has two sons, Isaac and Ishmael. From Isaac's lineage, we have a 12 tribe. Uh, Isaac has a Jacob. Jacob has a 12 son called children of Israel. God sent many prophets and messengers, just like Moses, Jesus, David, Solomon, so many prophets mentioned in this lineage also. And the other lineage from Ishmael, we have a prophet called uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He's the last prophet from the family of Abraham. Now, the, from Isaac to Jacob and their lineage, when Jesus came, people, divided into two groups and one is called Jews and one is called Christian. When they divided and the Christianity changed the attributes, misunderstood the nature of God, nature of Allah, and then they turned Jesus into a God, then Holy Spirit into a God. There is a history of Christian history, how these things happen. But the uh, idea is the Quran correct all those uh, attributes again and Quran addressed to both Jews and Christian to reflect on this, uh, the nature of Allah and the Quran was given and provides all the information on that. So the people should need to look into this book, uh, need to study the book and correct their understanding and belief about the one true God. Okay. Jazakallah khair. And uh, uh, we will continue in future with more uh, topics.